Hey, this is Charisma82, and I'm here with a new Disney video. Sorry I haven't posted anything in a while. Um, reason I have is that my computer broke down for about six months. I didn't have one, so uh, that's one of the reasons why, um, and the main reason, so we'll go with that. So my sister and I went to D23, which is about a month ago, and uh, I had been planning to put up a couple videos uh, about what we did when we were there, what panels we got to see, um, but I just hadn't gotten around to it until now. So in this first video, I kind of want to cover the first panel that we went to when we were at D23, which was the live action panel. Okay, so this was one of the two real big major ones that they had at the D23 um, convention. This panel took place on Saturday, and uh, my sister and I were there for Saturday and Sunday. We were supposed to be able to go Friday too, but uh, we got stuck in traffic and weren't able to make it for the part of the day we had planned to be there Friday, so we didn't get to see the animated panel or the animation panel, which was a bummer. Um, and we also missed the uh, Goofy Movie uh, tribute panel, uh, but I guess some stuff kind of made up for it later so um, but we'll, I'll get into that in either this video or another video as to why uh, I'm okay with that. The live action panel. Um, I brought notes so uh, I don't forget uh, the things that happened when I was there because if I try to remember without notes uh, I, I'd probably forget half of it so if I look down a couple times then I'm looking at my notes. I know I shouldn't but I'm going to start with negatives. Uh, first negative was the line weight, which, I uh, mean, nobody should really be surprised if you've been to conventions before and you want to get into a very popular panel, you're going to have to wait in a really long line. Um, my sister and I, uh, decided to get there about six o'clock in the morning to go to this live action panel, and this live action panel, uh, was supposed to start at ten o'clock. So, let's see, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, so that's about four hours before. And I think we got there maybe a little bit before 6, actually. Um, so we get there, and there were a ton of people, because we knew there would be. They were allowing people to line up at 10 o'clock uh, the evening before. So we knew there would be a lot of people. Um, but they were just filing in, like, pouring in after us as soon as we got in there. So uh, the way that D23 works with their lines and... Um, uh, the only other big, pa uh, not panel, but the other big convention I've been to before is Comic Con. And so I did a lot of comparisons between Comic Con and D23 and the way they work their lines. D23, they kind of have two lines. Their first line is you're definitely getting into the panel. And the second line is maybe you should hope you get into the panel. Um, so we ended up being the first two people in that second line. I and mean, we got there at six in the morning. So, very first two people, they told us, stop, uh, you can't go any further, you can't get into the for sure you're getting into this panel. Um, so just uh, in case anybody's wondering and you want to go to D23 in the future, if you decide to go to uh, a panel, uh, at least the one in the main hall, the main D23 uh, hall, uh, there's those two lines and you have to get there super early to be able to uh, get in that for sure line. Um, and we also talked to somebody while we were in line who had been there in line for this live action panel since like 6 o'clock the day before. Which is another complaint that I have uh, about D23. They set these rules that you're only supposed to show up um, at a certain time and they say we will not allow you to show up any other time before then. That's a lie. By the way, D23 people lied a whole bunch, and I'll get into that into my other videos. But for right now, here's the first lie. Uh, they will let you line up whenever uh, you want to, um, because they want to make you happy, because it's D23. If this was Comic-Con and you tried to pull something like that, they tell you to do something and you, you try to do it anyway, they do not put up with it. They don't try to make you all happy, um, at least not in my experience, uh, but D23 does try to make you happy. So. Just letting you know, um, if you're a big die hard fan um, of something and you want to for sure be in it, you got to get there super early. And hey, you can line up before uh, whatever time they assigned you, because they don't they don't observe those rules. 
And since we're on the topic of things that I didn't really care for, I'm going to name my second complaint. Um, by the way, we did get into the panel. Um, since we were the first two in the hope you get in line, we, we were pretty sure that we were going to get in. It just wasn't definite. Um, Disney kept telling you that over and over and over. You are definitely maybe sort of going to get in, but we can't definitely tell you yes you are. But we knew we were probably going to get in since we were the very front of the line. So we made it in. The thing that I was upset about was they were trying to cram in so much stuff into this live action panel because they only had so much time that um, they didn't have the people that they flew in for these um, to represent these movies like the actors or directors or whoever they brought in. They didn't let them sit down like on a panel. They just had them come in. Everybody cheered because they're like, hey, famous people. And then once everybody saw them and they answered one or two questions that were kind of canned questions if you know what I mean like did you enjoy working on this movie oh or um, can you tell us something about the new movie coming out and the person's like no but you can watch the trailer that I was allowed to intro and that was about it for I mean there might have been a couple of other questions asked that are a variety of those but mostly uh, like actors didn't really answer any big huge questions um, I mean some of the directors that came out might have said a couple things but none of them sat down like on a panel like you know at comic-con At comic-con they bring the people in send them down um, they have somebody who hosts the panel and they ask a whole bunch of questions like that people actually want to hear the answers to and then if there's time at comic-con they even have people line up from the audience to ask questions there was none of this done at this panel the live-action panel at D23 so that was uh, the second thing that kind of, uh, I mean, I didn't hate that they didn't do it that way. It just kind of um, didn't really care for it. Okay, so uh, the movies that they covered. Let's see. Um, if you haven't read about this already online, which you probably have, let me uh, go ahead and name the ones just in case you don't know which live action movies they were talking about in the panel. First off, they had Marvel, which covered Doctor Strange and Captain America. Then there was another movie called The Finest Hour with Chris Pine, which Chris Pine did come out. Um, and that was about the only thing that was interesting about that. Third was The Jungle Book, which is live action adaption of The Jungle Book. They had another movie called Through the Looking Glass, which is a sequel to the first Alice in Wonderland movie live action one that they had with like uh, Helena Bonham Carter and uh, Johnny Depp. Then they had Beauty and the Beast live action, Pirates of the Caribbean, the fifth one uh, with uh, Johnny Depp, of course, uh, was the next movie that they talked about. And the last one, which everybody, okay, probably two thirds of that room was there for was Star Wars. So what was the best and the worst? Keeping in tradition with this video and just going with the negatives first and saving all the good for last, um, I'll go over the ones, uh, the movies that were kind of more negative like I didn't really care for as much um, and no big shocker here um, because uh, I've heard a lot of other people say that this was a downer for the panel um, uh, and not I'm not saying it was negative because I don't like this but I love Star Wars and um, of course one of the reasons I was in there was for Star Wars there, there were other movies I was decided to hear about too but Star Wars of course was one of them um, but it was kind of a letdown because they didn't bring any new footage for the movie. They did have J.J. Um, Abrams come out on stage, which was cool to be able to say that I've seen him. Um, and they brought out the three um, main characters that are going to be in the upcoming Star Wars movie. And then they brought out Harrison Ford. And that's cool, of course. Um, I was kind of hoping they would bring out, you know, uh, Mark Hamill or Carrie Fisher, too. But, you know, it's cool. So the only thing they really did with the Star Wars uh, section, little small section that they had at the end of this, this big panel that they had, was um, showing, like, like, 20, 30 seconds of footage of... Um, not what the movies are going to be or anything that's going to be in the movies, but they're going to put, be putting Star Wars lands in um, both Disneyland and Disney World. And they were showing us footage of what the concept art will be towards what they want to put in at those parks. 
And personally, I was thinking, why didn't they put this information in the next panel uh, about the Disney parks and the resorts and stuff like that? But um, I guess they wanted to announce it there, too, because um, they didn't have anything else. They didn't show us anything else. So that was kind of disappointing. Um, and no, I didn't get to go to the other panel about um, the Disney parks, theme parks and resorts and um, so I don't know how much they revealed later in that panel about um, Star Wars lands and stuff, but all we got to see in the live action panel was um, um, some screenshots of what they want the place to look like. And uh, one of the people who work for Disney came out and said that um, they're really excited about Disneyland having and Disney World having these Star Wars lands and that they're going to try and make them as authentic as possible and everybody who works in those lands are going to be totally authentic so they're like yeah if you go into a shop to buy something you're going to have some um, uh, cast member dressed up like um, I don't know Ewok I don't know <laughs> probably not an Ewok but you know different characters from the Star Wars universe um, from head to toe they're supposed to be completely in character so that was kind of interesting but still not what everybody for there was wanting to hear for Star Wars information we wanted movie stuff come on something that was both kind of disappointing but kind of awesome at the same time uh, so I don't know where else to really put this but in the middle I guess was the live action Beauty and the Beast something my sister and I have been really looking forward to um, just because you know it's Beauty and the Beast and uh, also they have some really good actors that they've picked to be in the movie none of the actors could be there um, but they did make a short video with um, Emma who's going to be playing um, Belle uh, Emma from Harry Potter. She's um, did a quick video message for us fans at D23. Also, um, uh, Josh Gad, I believe his name is, is playing LeFou. And then the dude who was in Lord of, not Lord of the Rings, um, The Hobbit, and also in Dracula Retold, or whatever that name is of that movie. Um, I'm botching it up really bad. I, Luke Evans, I think is his name. Uh, he's playing Gaston. Um, those two guys, they um, were interviewed kind of too, and they did a little bit of singing um, from the Gaston song, uh, you know, from the original Beauty and the Beast um, movie, animated movie. So that was neat, but at the same time, that's all we really got. We didn't get anybody coming out in person, um, which was kind of sad. We were kind of hoping for that. Um, but best part was that we did get to see Emma in the dress, um, uh, the yellow dress in the ballroom scene for, you know, the big dance for the Beauty and the Beast from the animated movie. So it looked really, really good on her. So uh, excited about that, but still it was kind of sad that we didn't get to see anybody come out and talk about it more. We just got some clips um, and that was it. So that was kind of in the middle. Something that was really neat, but not the highlight of the whole panel, um, I'll get to that in a second, was uh, the Marvel section, and that was at the beginning of the panel. Um, first they went over Doctor Strange, and uh, they had Benedict Cumberpatch uh, do a quick video telling us he couldn't be there, but said a few things about the movie since they just barely started filming at uh, that point of time when we were there at D23. Um, and then we got to see art um, that's inspiring the direction of the movie, how it's going to look, and it looked really good. And I've been looking forward to Doctor Strange as a movie, so that was really neat to see. Um, also, they talked about Captain America Civil War. Um, we got to see kind of who's on whose side a little bit. Um, I won't say, well, maybe I will. Uh, so go over this part really quick if you don't want to know like the people who are in a group together right now um, who, who take sides because if you didn't know in Civil War the superheroes they split and take different sides um, Captain America I believe has Scarlet Witch with him and um, he also has um, oh, I always for Falcon Falcons with him of course um, they also bring in Ant-Man and he's kind of working on their side too and then they've got Hawkeye working for them as well. There might have been one other person, um, but I know those guys are all teamed up on one side against Iron Man and whoever's on his side, which we definitely know um, Black Widow is because they showed us um, some footage from the movie. 
Um, and one of the little pieces that we saw was um, Hawkeye versus uh, Black Widow. So that was kind of neat. Um, but there, nothing really huge stands out that I remember from the rest of that, except for maybe um, the guy playing Ant-Man. Um, he his bit talking to um, meeting Captain America for the first time was hilarious, and uh, I'm sure if you want to know more about the clips they showed, you can look it up somewhere else online. But those are the main things that stood out to me. And I just have to throw in an at Marvel panel. We also got to see Chris Evans. He came out and he talked about uh, the upcoming movie that he's going to be in for Captain America Civil War. And he was really psyched about it. And it was cool to see one of the actors up there that's really psyched about one of their projects. You know, some of them come out and just go answer the questions. They're like, oh yeah, and we had fun. Yeah, no, he was like definitely psyched about his movie. So that was cool too. So the best thing about the whole panel, and I didn't go into this panel thinking this was going to be the highlight, but it was, was the Jungle Book. You're, you're right. There was Star Wars. There was Marvel. It, there was all these other pirates. By the way, pirates, all they had was Johnny Depp come out as dressed as a... Uh, uh, Jack Sparrow and half the stuff he said made no sense and then he threw grapes at people but you know that's why we love him as Jack Sparrow I guess but um yeah I, I didn't get out of that what at all this next movie is like supposed to be good or not uh, because I love the first Pirates movie but the others not as much so I don't know um, I, if there's grapes in the movie then I guess there was a preview um, but putting that aside live action version of the Jungle Book. It was amazing. They um, brought out a couple of the actors. Um, Sir Ben Kingsley was there. He plays the voice of Bagheera. Um, they had, um, oh, the, her name escapes me, but she's the she's going to be playing the wolf, the, uh, the mother wolf of Mowgli. And they had the boy that's playing Mowgli out there too. So they had the three of them up on stage um, along with the director. Um, He's the same guy who directed Iron Man, the first Iron Man, um, whose name escapes me at this moment as well. Um, and I'm upset at myself that I can't remember his name because uh, I always know his name. Um, but anyway, uh, he, he directed the movie and uh, they kind of talked a little bit on stage, which was cool. And then um, they uh, let us see um, a, a trailer that they put together especially for Comic-Con. Now... They've released a trailer since then, and I've seen it online. It does not do the trailer that we saw at Comic-Con Justice. Um, the one I've seen online is maybe about a minute or so, and it's got some stuff from the movie, but just seeing that, you're like, okay, that looks interesting. The trailer we saw at Comic-Con made me a believer, like, I need to go see this movie. When is it coming out? It looks awesome. Uh, had all these um, different emotion, emotional roller coaster going on watching this um, this trailer and the trailer was longer it was probably I don't know two or three minutes um, things I liked about the trailer we got to see a lot of the main characters uh, and they look really good um, they they used um, the same techniques they used with like um, uh, Golem from Lord of the Rings, um, motion capture. So they did that with like a lot of uh, the movie. So that was really interesting. They they had um, scenes of Mowgli um, getting away from Shere Khan. Uh, Idris Elba is playing him, his voice for Shere Khan, and uh, he looks really cool. Uh, the tiger um, in the movie. And then Bagheera looks awesome. They had some scenes with him talking with Mowgli. And then, of course, we got Baloo. And um, Bill Murray is playing Baloo. So the only thing that I found kind of odd in the trailer was that, that he is playing Baloo. And, um, but he was singing the Bear Necessity song, and they did half the trailer with him singing it um, kind of in the background while they did other stuff. Um, we got to see King Louie, which was really um, neat. And Christopher Walken is playing King Louie, which is kind of crazy, but the way they introed him in the trailer was hilarious. Um, I can't wait to see that. That'll be awesome. Um, but yeah, overall, I'll put it this way. I'm, I'm, I know I wasn't the only one who thought that that was probably one of the most awesome parts of this whole live action panel, and I'll tell you why. 
because uh, out of that whole time we were in there with all these different movies that I listed, um, not talking about actors that came out because some of the actors got standing ovations like Harrison Ford, of course, and there was a couple of others. This was the only movie after they played a clip the trailer and there were other ones that had trailers and clips this was the only one who got a standing ovation okay everybody in the room was on their feet cheering screaming and uh, then after they play the trailer and people are just freaking out how awesome this trailer was um, the people um, who were part of the movie the director and then the actors came back on stage and the director it was hilarious he he was high fiving them and he was he was cheering too because he knew getting that standing ovation that he had basically won the the whole the whole panel the live action panel uh, because you know the vibe in the room after that trailer it it was really good. I don't know how else to explain it but it was really good so make sure you check out the movie whenever it comes out or um, any other trailers that come out at, um, I know the first one's out already so if you haven't seen it you can go check it out right now um, but it's not as good as the one we saw at, uh, at the D23 those were the highlights the good and the bad um, the in-between there was a bunch of other things that happened when we were at D23 but um, I want to separate them into separate videos so after you're done watching this one you want to see one of the other videos uh, about D23 I believe I'm going to go over, um, we went to two other panels while we were there. One was the Aladdin panel. Um, so it featured people from uh, the animated movie Aladdin. They got together and I'll talk about that. And then uh, also we went to the Frozen sing-along panel on Sunday when we were there. So I'll make another video on that and then of course uh, we got to meet some celebrities while we were there so that was really neat and I'll talk about that in another video or um, if it's pretty short maybe I'll combine all these things I don't know I just knew the live action panel was going to take a long time to talk about because there was so much in it thank you for watching and I hope you stay tuned for more